Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, I don't ordinarily like to open these things with when I were a lad, but when I were a lad, Blood Angels were bright red. We're talking 1996 style, off red tomato style. They were brilliant. I loved bright Blood Angels. And it can be a little challenging sometimes finding ways to paint those because such bright colors, they seem daunting. It's kind of like painting white, there's a reputation for it being difficult. But I swear, this is probably one of the easiest, fastest methods I can show you to get a pretty nice looking old school style Blood Angel on the table. So nice and quick, all of the paints will be listed in the description below, along with the recipe for the base. Let's get started. In order to prime this fella, I've started first of all with a primer spray of Wraithbone. And then over the top of that, I've primed him in pure red from the Army Painter. Now, why not just pure red straight from the can onto the plastic is the same reason as any other very bright color. So if you're painting red or yellow, you want to lay something down like a white or even a bone color first. Now, I've done this previously on the Order of the Bloody Rose miniatures that I've painted, and it works pretty well. I do suggest a first light color. So white if you can't get any of the others, but a bone or wraith bone will work perfectly well. And as well, you'll spot that there are a couple of little places where I haven't quite reached with the primer. Rather than spraying it until it's thick and gloopy and covered, just cover the majority of the miniature and then go to your primer color from the pot. So I have here a little bit of pure red. And I've tended to find that with a vortex mixer or a nail polish shaker or something like that, the army painter paints are not such a uh, arm breaking chore <laughs> to mix up. And all I'm going to do is just jam over some of the areas where you can see a little bit of the primer still showing through. If you wanted to do this a slightly different way, what you could do would be to prime him in Wraithbone, same as I did, and then give him a couple of thin coats of Evil Sun Scarlet. The main reason why I've gone for the Army Painter in this case is because you have a much smoother finish. There's something about their primers, it has an almost gloss to it. It's not always to your advantage, but in this particular instance, it is going to be. So we're going to move on now and start painting in some of the details. And I'm going to start with two colors, both black gray and black from Vallejo. This is mostly because of the coverage. I am going to include their uh, Citadel equivalents in the description down the bottom there. So if you're worried you can't get these, don't worry. I'm going to start first of all by painting in his undersuit with black gray. And you know what, at the same time, I'm going to paint in his equipment with this too. Uh, reason being, rather than a pure black for his leather, we can shade this and get a little bit of variation in color. I always really love how quickly Blood Angels seem to come together. Like you get that leather done and job is a good one, you know. <laughs> so we'll move on to the mechanical black stuff. And for this, I'm going to use just that straight black. I'm going to use my medium base brush for most of this, but when I get near anywhere that I want a little bit more control or I'm concerned I might splash some of the red, I'll swap on down to a layer brush instead. Now anywhere that's going to be metallic, base this in black at the same time, because it will look better. Depending on how you've assembled your guys, you're going to have more or less gold to paint, but however much you've got, a little bit of retributor armor will be plenty. And when it comes to the shoulder pads, uh, the older ones that come in the Firstborn Marine kits, they have a very simple blood drop thing, and I'm not going to paint that in gold. I'm going to paint that in another color in a couple of seconds. But the shoulder pads that come on the Primaris sprue, they have a like a lip around the edge of the blood thing. So I would paint the Primaris ones in gold now and then tidy up the red in a little bit. But on this fella, I'll show you what I mean. Now I've also dotted in some of the rivets, uh, which I think are going to look pretty cool in gold. I've done this now because if I make any mistakes, we've still got that last stage red tidy up to do, so I'm not too fussed. I have now Galvorback Red, and this is actually really a nice deep purple. It's a, kind of a bruise color. I'm going to paint in a couple of the blood drops in this color rather than gold. It'll be quite dark, but we are going to highlight this one later. When it comes to the silver metal details, there's two trains of thought. 
If you're planning that you do want to be able to highlight these later, then what I'd recommend would be to start from Lead Belcher, which is a little darker than what we're going to use. I'm going to use Iron Hand Steel because I don't want to highlight this. Once this is shaded, this is going to look pretty much perfect, and there's no faffing about required. So I'm going to apply this over all of the bits that I want to be, if you can imagine, bright silver. Especially on areas like his chainsword, don't worry too much if you do splash a little bit onto the body. We can come back and tidy that up with some fresh black. Now we're getting somewhere. We're really coming down to the last couple of details. I'm going to paint in his purity seals, and for this I'm actually going to use a couple of army painter colors I really like. We'll start off with skeleton bone, and I'm going to apply this over the whole thing. And once that's dried, I'm going to use a little bit of goblin green, still from the army painter, to fill in the wax. Of course, you can use any color that you like here, and most of the time, on other marines, I tend to use a dark red, so Galvorback red would ordinarily be something I quite like, but a little splash of green on your Blood Angels does stand out quite nicely. And now the last base coat we're going to apply is actually a bit of white. Now I've got myself a little brush here, and I'm going to go ahead and jam this straight into that eye socket, and probably make a right pig's ear of it in the process, but not too worried. The reason why we're doing this now, of course, is because we can still tidy up as we... Oh, goodness me. We can still tidy that up. So, like I figured, absolute disaster. But not to worry, a little bit of fresh pure red, and I'm going to go ahead and tidy up some of the areas where we've had little mistakes. So up around the eyes and any other splash over points. Once you've finished your tidy up, ordinarily at this stage what I would do would be to hit this with a gloss varnish, a Vallejo spray or something like that. But in this case I'm not going to, because the army paint of red is quite smooth, and I think that's going to take care of reducing the surface tension of this shade in much the same way. We'll find out quickly, and if you want to see this done properly, the World Eaters painting guide that I did recently has that same tip. So, let's experiment live on camera and see what happens. I have here one of my little mixed up pots. This is the Marine Juice. Now this is adopted from a recipe used by the Forge World Army Painting Team. It is equal parts non-oil, Reichland Flesh Shade, and Lamian Medium. And it goes a very dark brown, but slightly red. Kind of like Agrax Earthshade, but that little touch of red is going to make a big difference. I've shaken it up really well, and I'm now going to apply it generously over the entire miniature. Really make sure that you're working it into any recesses, and then same as any shade, we'll leave that to dry for about half an hour. If you get it gumming up anywhere, like in the eyes for example, you'll see I moved that away with my brush. Yeah, don't worry too much about getting this right, just bucket it on, and then if it looks like it's too heavy, you can shift it around with your brush. Then once it has dried, you're going to have something that looks like this, and I love how that turns out. That shade, it isn't black, it isn't red, it isn't brown, but it's this nice deep shading to everything it goes on, and I tend to find it takes on a little of the characteristic of the color that it's going on to, so quite nice. What we'll do now is actually do some highlighting. You could, if you wanted to, grab out your small layer brush and do this the hard way, but I have this little grubby diddly brush, tiny wee thing that I got out of the stationary aisle, and some Dawnstone. And I'm just going to prep my brush up. Now this will probably take me passing over the chest eagle a few times, or it might just splatter straight on. Oops. <laughs> the value of testing how much paint you have on your brush before you go near your miniature. But I'm just going to pass over the chest eagle now a few times to pick out the edges of those wings. And I'll do the same along the edges of the weaponry. Now when it's come to highlighting marines, I've done dry brushing on them dozens of times before. So I'm going to show you a nice quick way of getting some edge highlights on there. The temptation is going to be there to highlight every panel, but you don't need to do that to get a nice effective look. What we're going to concentrate on is areas that are naturally going to catch the light. So I have here some Fire Dragon Bright, which is, well, bright, and I'm going to use the edge of my brush rather than the tip, just to catch some of the most prominent edges 
of detail. You see, you can go over this two or three times to strengthen that color where you need to. Same two on the top of his helmet, same principle. Just angle your brush and you can use the edge rather than the tip, which will usually give you a lot more control. So don't do every single hard edge on the Marine, otherwise you'll be here forever. But pick some areas where you want. Come on, buddy, a little bit of paint. There we go. Just enough definition to really make that, that sharp line sing. Now that really sharp, almost tomato red will evoke a certain era of Blood Angels, and that's what I quite like. As you can see, you don't have to do everything, and all of this has been done just using the edge of my brush and angling the miniature to make that a little easier. So not as hard as, I guess, traditional edge highlighting, and once you find your flow, it'll only take you about five minutes per marine to get that result. I've got a little bit of Liberator Gold, and we're gonna do the same thing, just highlight some of the gold areas. You don't need to go overboard with this, just a quick flick. I did mention the blood drops earlier. What I'm gonna to use to highlight these is a little bit of Wazdaka Red. But instead of covering over the whole thing, I'm gonna try and paint just a little moon shape on one side there. Nice and quick, but very effective. And if you're feeling really fancy, you can go back to just a tiny wee dot of white, and we'll pop that into the corner, like so. Where it concerns his eyes, there are a few approaches. You could go in there with a glaze, a little bit of Way Watcher, but I'm going to use Warp Lightning. This is a contrast color. Just get a little tiny wee bit of this on the edge of a small brush. And very carefully, I'm going to paint that into that gap. Very carefully. Now that remains is to varnish him. You could highlight the silver. You could even make the gold a little brighter if you wanted to. But I'm happy with that result. I don't really want to put a huge amount more work into this dude, especially when we're concentrating on doing it as quickly as possible for a passable result. So I'm going to hit him with a Vallejo Matte Varnish Spray from the can, but then I am going to come back and hit the blood drops with a little bit of Gloss Varnish brushed on. So let's get a look at what this fella looks like with all of those last stages completed. And there at last, our Blood Angel is complete. Now hopefully at a couple of points along there, you might have seen some places where you could, quite honestly, stop painting. I've gone a little further with this dude than I probably would for the bulk infantry. For example, the highlighting, I might do it a little more quickly or less expansively, except on characters and such. Whereas for bulk infantry, you could just skip it altogether if you wanted to. It's really about how you want to get your models on the table. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyra Crawford, Trainboy, and then because somebody asked, comma, Fred, <laughs> and Jimmy. Your support lets me do this stuff. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.